Hello, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are, wherever you are, uh, taking in this conscious conversation. Welcome, my name is Mark Curran, and you're listening to Conscious Living Radio here on 100.5 FM CFRO in Vancouver. And as many of you know who've been following our work, it is Spirit Plant Medicine Week. We are gearing up for the first ever fully virtual Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, which is actually our 10th year anniversary uh, of the conference, which due to the current situation in the world, we are going virtual. Um, as well as we're, you know, pre-recording our, our programs as well. We're airing them live on Facebook and other social media channels. And it's always a great pleasure when it comes to Spirit Plant Medicine time, because I get to spend a lot of time working with a lot of great people, including a good friend, MC, co-host, Mr. Stephen Gray. Stephen, thanks for joining me yet again for another great conversation. Of course, Mark. Always happy to do that with you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to our guests today. We're blessed. Paul, Paul, we interviewed Paul Stamets about a week ago, and afterwards he sent us a message and said, you guys make a good tag team. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Just slap, right. slap him on the shoulder, and then he comes in. Yeah, Exactly, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, Stephen, you want to introduce our guests and our topic for, the, for our segment today? Well, uh, yes, I'd mostly like um, our guests to speak about that themselves. So uh, I'll just say that the reason that we put this together is to promote the conference. That's the bottom line. And anything that we talk about within that framework is great. Uh, but in particular, we're focusing on the work of Cosmic Sister and the many women. I mean, I didn't even count, but three, six, I don't know, it's about 15 women that Cosmic Sister is sponsoring to speak at the conference this year, which is a, a record for us. But although we've had a relationship with Zoe Helene here, who is one of the three guests um, for several years now, um, but it's just ramped up every year. And this year it's gone crazy. And it's uh, so many, you know, we have, I think we have more women speakers at the conference than men this year. Um, I haven't counted exactly, but it's, I think so, you know, um, it's a, definitely at least equal. And I'm pretty sure it's a, a couple more. And, uh, and so I'm, we're going to have each of the our three guests introduce themselves and say a little bit about, you know, how they got into this work and what their relationship to the conference is and such. But so that's Zoe Helene of Cosmic Sister and Caitlin Moakley, who describes herself as assisting Zoe. And one of our presenters, the Dank Duchess, who can also speak for herself. So, um, Zoe, how about introducing yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Zoe Helena. It's uh, Helena. The last E is a, kind of more of an E, so you can remember that. <laughs> oh, um, I keep forgetting. I, I know. Yeah. It's a Greek E, okay? They've got remember, so many different E's. Remember yeah. that for the introduction, Stephen, on <laughs> Friday. <laughs> It's okay, yeah. everyone gets Helena, wrong. Helena, Helena. Uh, but, you know, the, the Greek E is like an S sometimes, but not always. Yeah, Helena. Um, so yeah. Zoe Helena from Cosmic Sister, and I am the founder, and I like to just leave it at that because we're a collective, so I don't see it as a hierarchy so much, although I, um, the philosophers call me a reluctant leader, but here <laughs> I am, so this is what has happened. About, ooh, 13 years ago, I eloped with Chris Killam, the medicine hunter, who was a speaker already in this space and, and others. And I went to a, many psychedelic conferences where he was a speaker and I would sit in the audience and get upset with myself <laughs> for seeing one man after another walk on that stage, just like a line of men. And a lot of them were great guys, don't get me wrong, but there was just almost no females. It would be two females out of 25 or maybe four females out of you know, 40, um, and often they were the same ones you would see over and over, good women, good speakers, but that's it. So I, I would, all the inner monologuing in my mind was, you know, why, why am I not up there? You know, and, and I knew that I didn't ask, I didn't present myself as a speaker because, well, it was for all the wrong reasons. All of my own social programming, all of my own wounds that I picked up over the years of, um, being shy to speak out in that kind of circumstance. And so I just listened to that voice <laughs> and I was determined to um, do something about it or at least try. And so that was sort of the birth of this part of it that has to do with the conferences and placing or pitching and placing, I like to say speakers and then sponsoring when I can. And the only reason I can do that is I have sponsors also. So sponsors and people who've donated 
each according to their means and every single cent counts. So I wanna say thank you for everyone who has donated. I can't list them all and I don't wanna miss anybody. So I just wanna say thank you for everyone, seriously. It all goes in the pot and it's all used really carefully. It's a separate account for me. It doesn't, you know, I do, I do different things with Cosmic Sister. Cosmic Sister is not all psychedelic feminism. We're really an eco-feminist collective or an environmental fem feminist collective. So we're a bit, we're, it's a bit more broad than that. There's a lot of cannabis. Uh, you know, there, I think there's more women in cannabis than there are in psychedelics, but see that's changing because finally people are realizing that cannabis is in fact a sacred plant and can be a psychedelic plant. Certainly for me it is. So I would say that 13 years later, you know, um, what I did was this, I mean, I'm a philosopher, I'm a poet, I'm an artist, okay? So I, I like to think in terms of culture and changing culture and you know, evolving as a species and all those things. But I'm also very practical because I was born in 1964. I marched with the early feminist marches as a kid with my mom and all our cool friends. And you know, there were two pieces of it. There was like the talking about what the problems were. And then there was the, well, how do we change it? And one of the things is to just get some women in the, in, in the door, get them up on the stage, you know, just get some great women. And at that time, and let the women do their own thing. That's the other thing It's like, I'm not in control of it. They do their own thing. It's a very simple direction. Be honest, talk about what you know <laughs> and love. You'll show your passion, share something personal, at least one thing personal, and be ultimately positive. But not to censor if there's something really serious they're going to talk about, because that's important. We want to speak our truth, but to mm -hmm. ultimately leave everybody with some hope, because without that, you know, I also ask people to be male friendly, because we're not anti-male at Cosmic Sister. Good. We appreciate everybody across the gender spectrum. Actually. <laughs> yeah. so, so what I would do was I said, well, what if we were to just say, okay, I want to just say this. I would come to people like yourselves, you know, Steve and Mark, and I would say, hey, how come there are no more women? There's not enough women up there. And they would often say to me, I don't know anyone or we can't find anyone. We don't know or nobody knows them. And I thought, well, I'm going to do something about that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, and, and Zoe, I thank you for that because, you know, I'm not that I want to speak on Stephen's behalf. It, it's something as I've been involved in the conference for a few years now, that it is something that we had heard. And I want to thank you just for the support you brought to our conference to make sure that we have a, a good balance of, you know, men and women and, you know, culture. Yeah. Well, so thank, thank you. you. And, you know, I wanted to say, you know, it takes you all at the people who run the conferences, because this mm -hmm. is not my conference. It takes you wanting some diversity to make this happen. If you weren't open to the types of people I bring, and I, I like to mix it up. I mean, I think these women really are remarkable, all of them, but they're all very, very different, different times of life, different areas of expertise, different plants and fungi, uh, just different personalities. I mean, they're, but they're all really loving and creative and courageous women and I like that good and you know I also wanted to add in you know a little addendum to what Mark just said that uh, uh, you haven't mentioned yet Zoe which is that you also and I really appreciate this and it's found its way into the conference you also um, have a major focus and priority on uh, ethnic uh, cultural diversity um, yes. So, so we have several uh, uh, African American women this year, and we have um, a list. woman from Guatemala. We have uh, another woman from Ecuador. Uh, we have a really wonderful mix of, um, uh, of uh, you know, ethnicities, uh, eth you know, whatever cultural groups, et subgroups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, thank you for that. I and, see this as a global movement, and yeah. I think that many of us here in on Turtle Island, if you will, you know this is especially being a virtual conference you're going to get people from all over the world but even when it's in Vancouver in real life there's quite a mix in that audience and I love that I also want to just acknowledge that wherever we are there are indigenous people to that region and they mm -hmm. are to be respected but all of us are indigenous from somewhere someplace back if you go back far enough and even if, even if it's thousands of years at least it, it's something it's a culture that we each carry and, and we're also many of us mixes so for me, um, I leave it open to whatever, you know, however the woman or the man identifies, you know, if they identify mm -hmm. as indigenous or black or a person of color or 
white, whatever that even means. I'm, I'm open, you know, be yourself, be your loving self and shine. That's it. Yes, thank you, Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> she's been great that way. Say that. So, I don't even know yeah. Lady Gaga. <laughs> uh, well, she's been great for you know, be yourself, whatever you are. Anyway, um, yeah. let's um, let's introduce uh, Caitlin Mo or let's Caitlin, would you please introduce yourself and say a little sure. bit about how you how you got into this work and so on. Yes, um, I'm currently serving as one of the core team members for Cosmic Sister, and I've been working directly with Zoe since 2018. I found her, I want to say it was in 2015, maybe, randomly through a Boston Magazine article. Um, I was not looking for anything psychedelic related. I had never even heard of ayahuasca before. I was actually looking for a job somewhere in Boston because I was pretty tired of working for male-owned businesses that weren't really taking me seriously. Hmm. And after a search of looking for successful women in Boston, maybe like the third page that popped up was this Boston Magazine article talking about Zoe and her work with Cosmic Sister. So I just sent her a note and I said, I love what you're doing. I think I told her about my first psilocybin experience and how it impacted my whole life and changed my perspective on every single aspect of my life and what I was doing. And I wasn't interested in a grant or at least I didn't think I was at the time and so his response to me was you sound like a great fit I just made a folder for you <laughs> like, okay, sounds, well, like <laughs> sounds good um flash forward and I ended up getting a plant spirit grant in 2018 and I traveled down to temple of the way of light and mm -hmm. I drank ayahuasca for four nights in ceremony with the rest of the grant recipients and Zoe and Chris. And I then left my job in natural products and started my own consulting business, working with natural products, brands, herbalists, and individuals and organizations in cannabis and psychedelics. And I can honestly say that if it weren't for Zoe's support and the medicine support, I probably would not be in this position now. I, it seriously gave me the confidence to just bust out of what I was doing and do what felt was true to me. And Wonderful. I'm really grateful. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Great. So um, uh, the Dank Duchess, please tell us a little bit about, you know, what got you toward this work and what you're doing these days. Well, thank you for having me here. I met Zoe in 2018 at the Emerald Cup. She was hosting a forum called Psychedelic Feminism. And I was very intrigued. Interestingly, there at the time was only women. And she told me it was later that it was so that women would feel comfortable to speak. And one of the things that she she was talking about was the fact that sometimes women shrink in spaces or are not supported in spaces that are male dominated. So I stood up to talk about my experience as a hash maker being in the concentrates game. There are very few uh, women, I mean, there are more, and after this class, I just said there are five more, but there are more, but in relation, we're talking about maybe like 2% women and 98% men. And the, the experience that I've had being a hash maker in California, and that led to a very nice relationship and offering for me to, do this um, work at SPNC last year. And what I really like about the position that I am cultivating with Zoe and Cosmic Sister, and I'm very, very honored to be a part of Cosmic Sister, is that at some point, when we're passionate about what we're doing, we are by default role models for many. So when we see that there are not many Black women in this space, I have to tell you a third of the messages that I'm dealing with are from young Black women who are like, oh, I don't see very many women talking about cannabis the way you do or talking about psychedelics. So I feel I take great responsibility and that is important to me because if you don't see something, it's hard to go to, to contribute toward that. And, you know, I was given the chance to be a hash maker, I feel like on random, but you know, nothing is quite random. Um, I've been a hash maker for the last six years. I grow cannabis for the last 17 years. And I see my mission as 
is education. It's not necessarily hash making, but it's teaching people so that they have the op options to do something that makes them very, very happy. I'm here in Oklahoma. I had a three day class where I was teaching different types of hash making. For the most part, it's been fantastic. The last day was a little crazy. And I'm actually seeing that as a blessing because what I'm talking about during the conference is healing through hashish. And believe me, after this, I'm going to smoke some good hash. <laughs> figure out how I go forward from what I feel to be a catastrophe and everyone's like it's fine and I'm like how is it perfect so um I'm really appreciative of being with cosmic sister because although I don't know all the cosmic sisters what I do recognize is that there's a thread that runs through them mm -hmm. of helping themselves and in turn helping humanity not grandiose notions that they're going to like change the world in one full, full sweep, swoop, but rather with incremental changes and doing what they feel to be passionate about, they're helping themselves, their families, the communities and society as a whole. So I feel very blessed that I have hash education, um, psilocybin education, fitness education to contribute to that. So thank you very, very much, Sully, for the opportunity. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wow. So you are, I love you know, these ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Duchess, as long as you have the floor, as it were, um, uh, I would like to ask you a two-part question, basically. One is, why have you focused on hash rather than flour, so to speak? And, and then you have said, I think in your bio on the conference site as well, it says something like, you believe that, uh, you know, the, the you know, skillful or careful or responsible or whatever use of, of hash, hashish, um, can have can change the world in some respects you know so so how can you answer both of those for us please sure, sure. i mean the, I, I as i said i'm a grower for a long time but as i started making hash six years ago one of the things is that hash is concentrated so if you have good flour at uh, 25 percent, the hash that i'm smoking is maybe going to be in terms of thc and all its other associated cannabinoids much more concentrated so i might be looking at 80 percent. a lot of times it's efficacy plus their efficacy flavor and the experience so we want it i want it to be faster in terms of the flavor it's not in any way adulterated by combustion so when i'm like taking a dab um, i'm getting just all of those terpenes all of that oil and it's just a a very nice flavor without the the back end of something burning. It's being consumed at around 500 Fahrenheit as opposed to my joint, which can be 1200 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is the smoothness of it, the flavor. And the experience with hashish is totally different than with flour. I find that flour is very mind expanding. So sometimes when I just wanna throw darts at the board and just have a, a lot of, uh, ideas and see what I can bring together. Flour is really good for that. Hash is really good for focus for me. If I have something, one thing that I'm focused on and I smoke hash, I can really delve into that. And I find really for the most part, for most parts of the day, a combination between flour and hash to be most ideal. And I do feel that hash can change the world, not because it's hash, but really because of cannabis. It's cannabis that can change the world because cannabis stops us from having that binary thinking. Cannabis allows us to see the shades of gray. And a lot of times what we are fighting about is binary thinking without under, we think about or, and I know cannabis is and. Cannabis is, you know, so the woman is either nice or helpful. It could be and in some situations she's nice and helpful or mean. Cannabis allows us to see other people's perspectives and divorce ourselves from our ego, not in the same disassociative way like psilocybin, but rather not feel like it's so important to be so entrenched in our position. And a lot of our conflict comes from misunderstanding. I don't feel like it comes from a deep willful endemic thing of being human. I feel we all are trying to be, we're trying to self-preserve and cannabis allows us to see that we self-preserve better by preserving the next guy. And, and I think we all realize that if we, my hand is here and that next guy's hand's here, eventually someone else's hand is gonna be here for me. So it's not that I need my two hands for myself. I can give a hand, another hand will be there for me. And I think hash and cannabis are perfect for that. Wow, beautifully wow. put. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Well, did you have a question, Stephen? Go ahead. 
Oh, well, I just uh, want to make sure uh, if uh, either Caitlin or Zoe or both want to speak about the Emerging Voices Awards and whatnot, what's that all about? I barely oh, understand it myself. I will start <laughs> it. Um, this was begun, well, Caitlin also has a, an Emerging Voices Award of her own from last year. This started because there was a group of women who were really phenomenal, who weren't getting the attention they deserved or were just about to, but weren't quite, you know, hadn't quite burst onto the scene or they were just very introverted working behind the scenes, but doing phenomenal work. Um, and I didn't see any way for them to get acknowledged in the field. I uh, don't like to call it the industry, that hurts. Mm. So the field is good. <laughs> or the community, which is a little different because not everybody can be in the field, otherwise it'd be impossible. But the community is wonderful. You know, I mean, maybe you're, you know, um, you just work with your own, you have, well, you don't wanna get up on the stage. You don't wanna be part of the field. You just wanna be an audience member and do, and do your work in your own life. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. So all these people are part of this and some of the women come from there. But these are typically women who I think have great potential to be leading voices and to contribute to the field. So, and the community, the culture, that's another good word, the psychedelic culture, globally also. So I love that. Sometimes they come to me, sometimes they're nominated, sometimes I find them. And it's just a celebratory experience to sort of bring them in and say, hey, I see you, we see you, we think you rock. And they have gotten the most wonderful responses and it has made a difference in a lot of their lives. So um, often people will tell me, you know, one of the women from the Vancouver area, um, last year said within a week she got offered her first speaking gig she'd been working oh. in the field for a long time doing phenomenal work not getting very much attention at all mm -hmm. and uh, others are natural born you know extrovert stars and i think mm -hmm. this just kind of pushes them out front a little bit mm -hmm. sometimes i feel like we just need a little acknowledgement you know just to say hey I, i'm here i've been doing all this stuff do you see me and they're just literally there's no awards in this field so maybe we don't need our Oscars, but this, this particular one is for saying, take a look, mm -hmm. you know, um, give this person a, a listen. She, she's got a really cool thing happening here. She's got a different background. She's, and that's really what they are. Wonderful. If that makes any sense. Oh, Anybody want to add to that? Makes total sense. Mm -hmm. uh, what I appreciate about the Emerging Voices Awards and all of the Cosmic Sister Awards in general is that most of the time when we're going to conferences, we're seeing a lot of people who have PhDs or they have doctorates or whatever it is, that higher level education that's attached to their name. Not everyone has access to that. And from my perspective, I've had an experience with these medicines and Zoe understands that. And my experience with these medicines holds weight. I don't need a degree to be able to speak about these medicines. And what I appreciate so much about Cosmic Sister and these awards is just that, that my experience is just as important as somebody's research in the field, because I can speak about these experiences firsthand. Excellent. And, and I'd like to just say something about that is, is yeah. you know, but there's, there's, you know, I, I would call that social proof. You know, there's yeah. so many times that, you know, we can get caught behind science, bureaucracy, politics, rules, regulations, all of these things. When, like you're saying, Caitlin, you had the experience, you know what was real for you. And right. I've always said experience is the best teacher. So I'm more interested in, you know, hearing the experiences of hundreds, of, if not thousands of people and knowing what's worked for them necessarily than and academic scientific study that gets drawn out for decades and then everybody disagrees anyways you know right. so also, that's yeah. what i love about you sharing your voice and your experience so thank yeah. you for that yeah, yeah. you have these people who are doing these very well look my father's a scientist i grew up in science and art so I, i'm around a lot of scientists several of my major guys in my life were very fine scientists so i understand science and i appreciate science a lot but I will say that the people in my life have always been very creative scientists who are really looking mm -hmm. to explore the unknown. And this is, uh, there's a lot of, of beautiful pioneer work happening in this field. So that excites me. So I love the science too. I think the scientists and the, the MDs and the PhDs are great. 
and not but but and so Love are it. a lot of other amazing people with brilliant minds coming in that do not necessarily have those. You know, my, Maya Angelou is one of my favorites. Not She didn't have a degree. She did not have a degree. That's not how it worked okay. for her. She ended up with a ton of, of, of uh, honorary doctorates. And no, she's not in psychedelics, but she just came to mind because that's a person who changed the world and she had no degree. So it's not about a degree. It's nice if you happen into that path and you have those kind of privileges and that's, and, and that's accessible for you, but it, it's not necessarily the way things work. You know, uh, things happen in life too, you know, that change your, your direction. Maybe someone is a teen pregnancy or something like that. It, all sorts of things happen. I happened to get an MFA, which was a very fancy degree actually, but I could have gone on to get a PhD and I had the experience of going to Harvard, being accepted, and, mention, and you know, running into this woman who I still don't know her name, but a woman who had obviously been there a long time. She was a tenured professor. It was pre-internet day, so I couldn't look her up. And I told her what I wanted to do for my thesis. She said she loved it, but she looked me dead in the eye. I was about 26 or 7. She said, this is the patriarchy. They will do every, this is the heart. That's what she said. This is the heart of the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. They will do everything in their power to crush you. Mm -hmm. And then she said, get out there and do your work. You are ready. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to argue with this woman. <laughs> you know, I just really felt that I was in the presence of a, a truly wise mm -hmm. older woman. And I listened and moved on and did my work. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. But, you know, every day I, I see more and more PhDs on some of these. Um, it's a good point, Caitlin, because there's, again, nothing wrong with a PhD. But to think that a PhD makes you an expert in psychedelics is incorrect. What about the indigenous no. people? You know, there are, yeah. I know a few indigenous people who have PhDs, Don D. Davis, for example. But, you know, not many. And... And you know we 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 don't we don't think of them that way, right? We don't say, oh, we're not going to have an indigenous leader on our stage because they don't have a PhD. Uh, so I think it's the same with everybody. Like, look at Mar Mar we're talking about the women now. Martina Hoffman, you know, she's an artist. She doesn't have a PhD. She she might I think she has what I have. But we're artists. We don't do that. Uh, academics is the kiss of death to us. Although in the <laughs> theater, it's very academic, by the way. But, yeah. we, you know, going to get a PhD in the theater is looked down on. So we all come from these different places in our lives and we have different things to contribute. And they're all part of diversity. Mm -hmm. Diversity is not just heritage. It isn't. It's, yeah. it's, it's thought process, it's experience, it's what you bring to the community. And it's all important, just like in any diverse situation, like biodiversity, this makes it much more exciting for everybody. Um, it, we get into trouble when we start pigeonholing and doing too much of the same thing. Yeah, I'd like and, to and say I just that, Can, no, can I share one quote on that subject? I was in a leadership conference last week and I can't remember who said it, but I wrote it down. I dug it out of my notes because uh, I really loved it. And I thought it was, I think it's timely for what we're talking about because I certainly believe science has its place, no question. And this quote was, science is worthless without the spirit behind it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just thought within the work that we're doing, um, I just thought it was, it just really hit home that I actually wrote it down. I love quotes, but that was the one that's like, you know, you can have all the science, you know, and the spirit within the science is mm -hmm. really the magic, I think, that makes the science actually work. Of course. Let me just say this. Uh, um, I think that's great, Mark. I, I want to say with Duchess and Caitlin both there, um, bringing people down to the Amazon to work with Shipibo people in the most, the closest to a traditional setting we have. I mean, you know, nothing is really fully traditional anymore, but this is what they're developing of their, you know, on their own and with their own trainings and their, whatever they kept having survived several layers of colonialization. Um, we are privileged enough to be with them and to have that experience in their Maloka. And I, I work very hard to bring people there. It costs a lot of money and it's complicated to get people to Iquitos, Peru or Pocopa safely and to these really fine, you know, well-run centers so that they can have that experience because that mm -hmm. experience is with the original people or one of the original people working with ayahuasca rather than just in somebody's, you know, 
a yoga studio in New York. I mean, maybe somebody can have a marvelous healing in a yoga studio in New York, but it's not the same as a maloka in the middle of the rainforest with the rain and the moon and the, and these amazing people singing their songs and sharing their 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 exquisite um, tradition and talent with us and they really are something else so th that and then being that community of people together in that experience sharing with each other trusting each other is like that's where the magic really happens to me and i love that work and i would do it more so i caitlin was one of the people who got to come and duchess i would love you to come one year with us mm. if you're up for it it's a big adventure <laughs> you know, I want to say that uh, in regard to this whole line of thinking we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes or so that, you know, from our point of view, at least I'll speak for myself, you know, with the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, it's a big tent. There's room for all of these different angles in and no one should be, you know, emphasized more than the other in that regard. You know, the, mm -hmm. I think, for example, I mean, I, I love what you've just said, Zoe, about doing it in the jungle. I've been to Peru twice and done several ayahuasca sessions there's nothing like lying in the in a in a completely black maloka in the middle of a jungle where there's no electric lights around and the only sounds other than barfing <laughs> are, uh, and are the uh, songs of the shaman and the uh, surrounding uh, creatures of the jungle it's unbelievable you know and then you step outside at four in the morning you know to get a break when things are settling down and you look at the jungle and you go oh my god it's so amazing here anyway um but given that you know this triggered a question for me actually uh you know because for example i, I have a lot of respect for what they've been doing at places like johns hopkins you know mm -hmm. and uh you know if you saw the movie uh, fantastic fungi uh that recently it's an amazing movie um that paul stamets is associated with uh, the last section of it is on psilocybin and the work that they did at Johns Hopkins. And they interviewed a couple of the people that had been through that. And they create, a fant as far as I'm concerned, they create a fantastic setting and preparation and follow-up and everything for all that work. And these people had completely life-changing experiences. So I just wanted to say that there's room for all of it. But it also triggers a question for me, for you folks, if you feel like weighing in on it. I'm just kind of wondering, you know, all three of you are quite attuned to what's going on in this so-called psychedelic renaissance. Uh, you know, how do you see it going? I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons, you know, there are things that are maybe going sideways and things that are moving forward well. Any, any thoughts on that, any of you? You wanna weigh in first? Definitely Caitlin? go for it, Duchess. Oh, Duchess, yeah. <laughs> well, was that all I did? I was just thinking, <laughs> like, how far do we wanna go in this situation? Okay. Right. So Overwhelmingly, definitely, it is, it's great that we're all opening our eyes. I'm, I'm actually hearkening back to last year's conference when we were kind of debating uh, whether someone needed to be, have a PhD or have an advanced degree in order to administer medicine or to be a, a responsible sitter and such like that. <laughs> Yeah, you're on the. No. On the <laughs> and, and you know, Chris definitely got up there. He was just like, I don't need anyone who's just full of science to tell me how to feel. And I, and I agree with that. Yes. So I'm going to say, I definitely agree with that. With that being said, we're all, you know, we're humans and, and, and there's a whole human spectrum of ways of responding. And what I'm not liking is the, one of the things I'm not liking is the commodification of psychedelics and the psychedelic experience as a cool thing to do in culture without delving into why we do it now. Yeah. I, I mean, so that is, that's bothering me a little bit. So when we, you know, a year ago and I'm sitting and I'm watching, and I'm like, yeah, if I want to be able to take psychedelics, I want to be able to do it on my own or with someone I trust. I agree, I agree, I agree. And in the last year, I have seen so many psychedelic parties and such like that where I have a friend who went to Atlanta and went to a psychedelic party and she was given two and a half grams and she wasn't told what to do with that. And, wow. you know, everyone was just totally out of there, you know, people who are never taking any psychedelics mixed with people who are just like, give me 10. And it was a really wow. chaotic, the energy was really, really unhealthy for her. And she knew she was skilled in that way. She had been doing psychedelics for a while. And so I feel like, again, it comes back to education. There's a lack of education and there's a, a marketing engine 
behind psychedelics that I, I'm in a way that I'm offended that I'm not necessarily mm. offended with regard to cannabis. I don't know if it's because I'm just so used to the, um, the ups and downs of cannabis that like uh, psilocybin and all the other psychedelics seem fairly pristine. And I really don't want what we call chads coming in and patenting <laughs> over at the young ones who are just like, I take 30 shrooms a day. And it's just irresponsible. I feel like an old lady saying this. I, and that, <laughs> that stresses me out also, but it's just like, mm. it's, it's irresponsible with to me with regard to the respect that we should have for the sacred plant. I can't, I just feel like such a traitor, but that's, that's <laughs> no, <laughs> perfect, perfect. It's, it's, it's perfectly said because it's so true. And this is where, you know, use versus abuse versus being a crutch, you know, like tobacco in that way. We had a tobacco narrow up here uh, from Ecuador doing some work a couple of years ago. And he was talking about the healing powers of, of, of tobacco. And I gained a whole new respect for it. And he says, that's when it becomes a vice right okay. when it becomes this thing you know and we see i i see it in community here as well where you know it all almost becomes a new way of partying for the weekend versus doing the work and the one thing i want to kind of just tap onto in what we're talking about in regards to our conference you know the the feedback i've heard for the past few years is the way the community comes together because we have science we have experience that comes together from a presenter point of view. And what's really great about it is that we're bringing together practitioners, scientists, doctors, all of these people. And, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, the, the common person, the people who are curious, the seekers want to learn more. And they're bringing them together in a way versus just a full on um, like psychedelic conference based on science and, and things versus you know a festival for fun there's this you know cohesive bringing together between the two sides that i've heard is one of the reasons people love our conference so much it is a community and it's a great group Definitely. of people you know i've yeah. i've enjoyed some of the conversations with just random people in the mm -hmm. audience when they're waiting around for a coffee or something and mm -hmm. different ages i love seeing that to an 18 year old talking with a 70 year old just mm -hmm. like listening to each other really sharing really sharing that's beautiful and that's rare in our culture sadly mm -hmm. i think um, i want to say i want to go back just a little bit to paul because you brought up paul and i i I said I wouldn't mention people, but I do want to thank Paul for donating to Cosmic Sister without being asked, because mm. that is a truly a male ally. Thank nice. you, Paul. Um, <laughs> his, you know, I, I also want to say that the work he's doing, uh, he's a perfect example of a scientist who's really on fire. I mean, he's he is truly engaged in the in the mystery of the world and the uh, the wonder, the wonder of life, and that is the kind of scientist. I'm interested in, okay? Somebody's excited about life. When you mention science and the other people, there's also art. And I think it might even be a 90s term, I'm not sure, but there was this term called cultural creatives, which I thought was good because it, oh, yeah. it was a bigger group than art. Uh, it wasn't just artists because, you know, not everybody can be an artist either. Everyone can say they're an artist, but that doesn't mean they're an artist. You know, Martina Hoffman, Pascal Ferry, her, her sweetheart, who's gonna both be talking at this conference. Those two are real artists, okay, visual artists, all right? They are truly committed. John Sheldon, truly an artist okay that's an artist check him out don't miss him so there are other people who are involved who are very creative i, I would i would put duchess in there duchess i'd say you're a, you're a cultural creative you know in that sense of a super creative person definitely working with the medium that she's she's got in front of her to do this education it's more than just education it's exciting it's uh it's you're, you're using it all you're using it all um so i think that whatever the term is, it's just, everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome at Spirit Plant Medicine. And I love that. And I do run into, in other conferences, I run into the same sort of things. Like we don't, this is another thing I get now is people aren't known, you know? Well, hey, <laughs> I remember Stephen, you know, I mentioned a, a man who's very well known that you'd never heard of. And you've mentioned once in a while, somebody who's very well known that I've never heard of. Hey, you know, we run in certain different circles. 
every time you go from, you know, I'm a bridge, bridger of worlds, like Chris, we share that. I've often been in, in spaces where the sort of big poobahs are very, very well known and actually get a little bit of egotistical sometimes about that. And if you don't know who they are, then it's just like, hmm, you know, there's a, there's a, they're insulted, they're offended. <laughs> That you don't know them, but they wouldn't know half the people in our field. And I love that. I love just tossing out somebody's name. Like, have you ever heard of, you know, uh, Patricia Ziprot? She was my my mentor. Look her up. <laughs> you haven't heard of her, have you? <laughs> so every time you go from field to field, you're going to get somebody new. Well, we're like the mycelium that's connecting the world and the work that we're doing <laughs> to change humanity, right? Mm, we're like little fun guys. We are. Yeah. <laughs> fun guys, yeah. Uh, but hey, fun, careful, fun Stephen. Yeah. We're with the sisterhood. Yeah, yeah that's indeed. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Caitlin and or Zoe, do you care to weigh in on that earlier question that uh, Duchess already answered about the, you know, a sort of a progress report on the psychedelic renaissance? Go for it, Caitlin. Sure. Um, well, I think it's really great that these conversations are being opened up and more and more people can feel like they can come out of the closet and talk about their psychedelic use. Um, but I will say there's been a strange experience with all of this where I do, which I'm so grateful for the spirit plant medicine community and for the cosmic sister community, because never once have I felt this clickiness or like I wasn't welcome or that I didn't know enough or I wasn't involved enough so that I wasn't able to join in on a conversation. This is something that I am experiencing in the psychedelic community now because mm -hmm. there is this sort of holier than thou attitude with some people and there's more. I'm definitely recognizing that there are some groups like Spirit Plant Medicine and Cosmic Sister that are all about sharing and sharing experiences and sharing resources and sharing the stage. But then I'm also witnessing this strange ownership that some people are expressing with psychedelics and cannabis too. Mm -hmm. And it's uncomfortable and it's hard to navigate and it's not very welcoming. And Zoe is going to be talking about representing the medicine. And that's the prime example for me when I see these things happening. It's just mm -hmm. having these experiences with psychedelics. I've never come out of them thinking that I was better than somebody else or that I had more to offer than somebody else had to offer. And now that I'm seeing these movements mm -hmm. that feel like people, rather than wanting to share the movements, they are wanting ownership or they're wanting a name attached to it or recon <laughs> being <laughs> recognized for their work. Like this is shared opportunity and this is shared medicine and nobody owns this right now, but we do have to respect the people and the places where these medicines are coming from because without them, we wouldn't have the medicines because they mm. are the stewards of this medicine. So I'm just yeah. going to leave it at that. <laughs> well, that, that's really well said. And, you know, mm -hmm. in the field where we're at, thanks, Zoe, for giving me a new word, because sometimes I had a lack of better word than the industry, because I go, oh, I hate to say it, but uh, <laughs> in the field. Um, <laughs> Caitlin, very well said. I, I totally agree. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I felt it, um, you know, within the work that we're doing. So thank you for, for saying that. Um, and I think as I've been watching the evolution myself, just in the few years I've been doing this work with the conference, um, you know, I hate to say it, but my hallucination is ego and money, mm. you know, and this is what we talked about well. earlier. Yeah. The commodification Absolutely, of the work yeah. and yeah. there, ha you know, I believe that, you know, as you well know, you know, a lot of these medicines aren't overly expensive. A lot of it grows naturally where you can here in the Pacific Northwest and BC, you can go picking all of your own psilocybin, especially right now. <laughs> I got a friend who's been posting pictures of all the stuff he's been picking lately. And I believe the medicine needs to be affordable for the many, for all of humanity and money cannot be a barrier to mm -hmm. our transformation, to our growth, to our awakening so that we can all see what Caitlin was talking about, that oneness that we as different as we all are, we are the same. Nobody is better or less than. And when we can see that, and I think the medicines really help with that. So I just wanted to chime in there, Caitlin, because that was beautifully said. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Zoe, do you want to weigh in on that one? Sure. I mean, the question that you asked, some of the downer parts, well, I mean, no, the I'll, uppers and the downers. The uppers and the downers. <laughs> well, I want to say that since I started doing this thing with trying to get more women, it, it, I, I'm, I'm very happy to say that it's a lot better than it was across the industry. And I say industry <laughs> because these people are presenting, a lot of the conferences are presenting as industry now, and they are re presenting by presenting, I mean the whole thing, the headshot, the this, the that. It's very business oriented, okay? So I would say that in general, at least people know better than to just have a whole bunch of men and I'm going to say white men because in general, it's a whole bunch of white men. So they know better now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with white men. But, you know, it's, it's this entitlement that comes with the privilege of being born a white man in a culture that is where they're at the top of the food chain and, and have been for a very, very long time. It's not an, and this is not um, pointing fingers to anyone specifically. This is a, just a, a, a situation with how we are, a social socio-political, uh, socio-economic situation that we have. This is systemic, it's been around a long time, but it, it shows up sometimes. And when you're looking at something like psychedelics, which is supposed to be about being better, being a better you, being a better, you know, being a better human being, for others and for yourself, uh, you know, we profess to be woke or enlightened, so we should do better than have a bunch of white men up on the stage or a bunch of whatever on the stage. It, what, it, in a different alternate universe, maybe it could have been all women without any men. I, people love to say, you know, matriarchy. Well, I don't like matriarchy either. I think it needs to be a balance with everyone represented. So um, I think that it's getting better. Um, and I think it will continue to get better in that sense if we keep up the fight. But if we slack off, it will, it will fall right back into place because the greater culture has not changed. It's changing a little bit, uh, but it's not. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's what co it's coming out for me as the answer now. So the good thing is I do see a lot of progress and, and in that progress, again, it's not just about you know seeing women's faces up on a screen, it's about what they have to say and what they're contributing to the movement. Movement's another nice word, right, Mark? Movement. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that has its own life, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I would say some of the really negative stuff uh, I'm seeing right now is this, um, I mean, personally, I'm experiencing plagiarism. That sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. At we all. experienced that last year too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's it inspired good. by my work. Great, but don't just flat out take it. I mean, there there was one woman at a recent conference that Caitlin brought to my attention who literally lifted my language. And Duchess, mm -hmm. I think you've had a few of this. Is, yeah, yeah, they just yeah. lift it. Yeah. So don't do that. That's when that's when you know you, you at the very least you know you have influence that people are wanting to copy your work. So it's it's flattery in its worst way. It is. But the problem is it puts you in a position of, well, what do I do? Do I act like a business person, which is sick my lawyer on them? Do I do that? Because then I'm, then I'm in corporate, then I'm back in corporate. You know, yeah. I can do that. I can do that with the best of them, but I don't feel right. I would rather lead by example and yeah. just throw out another wonderful creative thing. Say, Hey, you got that. You took that one from me. You're going to take this one too. Here's another. <laughs> just <laughs> keep going in advance you know just throwing out the next thing that's cool and a lot of us are doing that and i want to also say um we can stick together the one those of us who are are in this for this particular reason for for sort of a, a greater cause if you will you know we were talking about the duchess you were talking about people kind of just getting high at parties and I know this went on in the 60s. I was a kid, so I wasn't participating, but my dad, his students were the age where they were all tripping, definitely. And so they were, everyone around me was tripping and they, they would sort of once in a while come home, my dad and my mom and his friends who were mostly professors too, they would say that they would talk about some of the really talented kids getting lost 
um, becoming druggies, becoming lost, getting, uh, you know, psychotic even, you know, mm -hmm. and the 60s had some fallout because of that. But at the same time, you it bet. was a breakout era. It was very important and it mm -hmm. led to where we are now. So we have psychedelic elders who remember that, listen to them. Mm -hmm. They have things to say. Uh, but there's this other piece, which is the indigenous part. And, and also what we're all coming up with, with our own versions of ceremonies and our own versions of working with medicines, like you are, Stephen, with your cannabis ceremonies. You know, I've got talking circles. That's where I met Duchess. And by the way, she did stand up and was phenomenal. Thank you for mm -hmm. that, Duchess. I'm just so grateful you did that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and all of these things matter. You know, we're, we're, we're creating our own ceremonial traditions just like they did in the old days i mean none of this stuff you didn't you weren't born with this stuff the stuff was created by somebody somewhere and a lot of it has been lost over time and so we're recreating it for our world and that's a beautiful thing happening i love seeing that i love that's it that's great yeah mm. um so we're, we're i think mark gave us the uh the timeline a little we're, we're getting close to to time for the radio yeah. portion of what we're doing um, you know, I'm happy to carry on longer for the, you know, value added bonus feature if you <laughs> ladies are interested, because I feel like we could talk for, for a while on these subjects. Though so I, I do want to say on, on behalf of the you know, Conscious Living Network, Conscious Living Radio and Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, thank you, Zoe, for the work that you've done to create this um, movement uh, within psychedelic feminism. I thank you, Duchess, for the work that you do and, and just speaking up and Hash, I love it. Um, <laughs> and and Caitlin, thank you for supporting and doing the work. I'd love to talk to you about a project I've got coming on as well about you know people's experiences. And and so we, the one thing I can say is, I know that the movement is not going to slow down because I watch the sisterhood growing and growing year after year. And I know you well enough over the past couple of years that you'll never let that happen. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, And what, what I've done is uh, in the comments, when this airs on the radio, we're going to have all the information on our website on consciouslivingradio.org. If you want to learn more about Cosmic Sister, there is links down below in the, the Facebook uh, feed, but it's zoehelene.com. And you, Helena. sorry, Helena. <laughs> see, I, and I was, and I was thinking about it before I said it and then I did yeah, it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can get all the information on, on Duchess. Her, her, she's got some websites and a whole bunch of information on her bio on spiritplantmedicine.com, as well as Zoe does uh, have all her information there. There's some videos and things. Um, we've never, we didn't share your video from last year, Zoe, so that's okay. Um, but thank you. Thank you for the work that you guys do. And on behalf of all of us here in Vancouver and around the world uh, in regards to psychedelic feminism, a big thank you. And Stephen, if you have anything more to say before I throw out our call letters and, and <laughs> sign off for Conscious Living, uh, please, this would be your time. Well, let me think. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's been a really uh, enjoyable and uh, I think very informative discussion. And uh, thank you, women, for joining us. And also just, uh, you know, I'm excited. With, you know, uh, this is like, you know, you're preparing a a meal for the royal family and you work on the meal for you know like forever and then they sit down and it happens and it's over in a couple hours so essentially that's what the conference is we've been working on this for a very long time and in five days it happens um so uh, it's it's right on our doorstep now it's going to be really interesting yeah yeah well we're, we're looking forward to the virtual format and to introduce some interactivity and, and some different ways of doing things just to kind of keep up with the changes in the world. And you can get all the information, spiritplantmedicine.com. And if you're watching this and listening, if you use discount code Cosmic Sister, you will also save on your ticket. There's three different ways you can attend, just live stream. There's an interactive portion for, you know, what we call our basic room. We have a VIP portion as well, but all the information's on the website. So again, thanks for listening. My name is Mark Cron. I'm just here with Stephen Gray, Zoe Helena, Caitlin Moakley, and the Dank Duchess. You've been listening to Conscious Living on 100.5 CFRO FM in Vancouver. Thanks for listening. 
now, ladies, we're still live. See, that gives me a cut point. <laughs> now, if you'd still like to uh, carry on a bit of conversation, I've got a little bit more time because here's my biggest question. Um, <clears throat> Hang on, right. Mike, Mark, one sec. Sorry to interrupt, but Duchess had uh, put in oh. the chat that she needs to get going. Okay. Oh, but I'd like a, a, a question. I mean, okay. So here's, <laughs> here's my one question that <laughs> is, is timely for where we're at in the world today is how do you see psychedelics and what's happening in, in the COVID world and everything else? Is there a place for working with the plant medicines uh, in this time to create change, to create you know, maybe some sort of certainty. I, I, I'm not sure, but what's the place for psychedelics in uh, today's world and related to this COVID pandemic? Hmm. That's why we're doing the virtual conference, really. Yeah, well, yeah. it is. It's the only reason. Yeah. yeah. Duchess, you want to have a go at that one? What's the value? Well, I think now more than ever, we, mm. we, we should be happy that we have psychedelics at our fingertips. I can only speak from about psilocybin and then psychedelic experiences we have with cannabis. But as I said before, it is the seeing of different perspectives. Between COVID and the racial upheaval and social upheaval we're dealing with here, especially like the United States, one of the things that has happened is that people tell me how much their eyes have been opened. I, people reach out mm. to talk more about something like microdosing or going on to macro dosing and such like that because they realize that there's something that they're not seeing. That perhaps what has been prepackaged as what reality is, is not all that reality is. And I think psychedelics have that unique ability to let us see, oh, what's behind door number one, two, and three, and what do you want your new reality to be? So rather than be being dogmatic and stuck with the traditions of my mother taught me this, my grandmother taught me this, now these all these woke people who are reaching out to find a new way of living, whether it's through art, through music, through psychedelics, um, I, I think it's it's amazing. We have some challenges, but it is amazing. Like if I had to say yes or yay or nay, we're going yay, yay for this. <laughs> You are so eloquent. I love the way you speak. <laughs> and I love your smile. Oh, yeah. all, all of you ladies have beautiful smiles. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, Caitlin, you want to have a go at that one? I was going to say, I have not ingested any psychedelics during this period of time. Mm. But what I will say is that it's made me think a lot about my resources and what I have available to me and then what other people have available to them or do not have available to them. And what I've been looking at during this time is I've been looking back on my experiences with psychedelics and with cannabis to think about what I can do to feel better and to help other people around me feel better and see how I can help other people and myself during this time. And I think psychedelics, well, I know psychedelics have played a major role in how I see myself and how I see the world. So I think this pandemic time has been a trip in itself. Um, no psychedelics needed. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's been very interesting, but it's definitely been a time for me to reflect on my past experiences and think about what the world is going to look like in the future. I mean, my heart was breaking when I found out that Peru was on total lockdown and that could have been our group with Cosmic Sister oh. there during that time. And just thinking about, I mean, the community around ayahuasca brings in a lot of money for people in Peru. And to think that the community down in Peru has been without the ayahuasca tourism this entire time, it's hurtful. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been an absolute privilege to be able to travel down to Peru and drink ayahuasca, but it's also, like I said, it's just heartbreaking thinking that a big form of income for these people is, has been taken away because of the pandemic and because travel restrictions. So it's been, been a lot to think about, and it's making me think about what I can do in the future to be able to give back a little bit more. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, Caitlin, because it's, it's really, it's been one of the things that really hurts me too. All over the world, people are really suffering, and I'm in touch with a, quite a few friends and colleagues in Iquitos and Pucolpa, 
in particular and other people who I know are working with people in other places where ayahuasca is served in indigenous settings. It's, it's not all uh, the Peruvian Amazon, it's across all of the Amazonian region where the vine and the leaf or something like the, the leaf um, is, you know, grows naturally. Mm -hmm. And all of these cultures discovered this medicine one way or, or the other and created their their versions of um, medicine work with these with these plants. So we hear a lot from people about how it harms the culture down there for so many people from other countries going to drink ayahuasca. But the other side of that is like Caitlin saying, it's not just the money they depend on, but also, you know, I like to bring up artists because artists are always begging for money. And hey, by the way, scientists are also almost always begging for money. And by that, I mean the money to truly do what you, you want to do without the um, concern for your patron. You know, what does your patron want? So it's not, it's not compromised work. And these healers are the same. Their work is pure. They want to heal in their tradition. And so this allows them to do that as opposed to having to do something that, you know, isn't quite, quite what they would want to do. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're able with, with the ayahuasca tourism, I can't stand that word either. It's mm -hmm. just wrong in every way. The people who travel to Peru to experience ayahuasca, more like a pilgrimage, are supporting mm. the healers and their art. And that not just the ones that are, uh, masters today, but the young ones coming up are excited about learning themselves. So it's cultural preservation. Mm -hmm. It's not just um, that it's not so much cultural appropriation. If you go there and you experience it with your, your, you know, true respect and love and, and they're in the lead, then it's cultural preservation and cultural evolution and cultural exchange. And that's a beautiful thing. So those people are without and it's not okay. It's very, very bad down there right now. I mean, it's devastating to think about. And it's, it's devastating in other places in the world mm -hmm. too. So just the fact that we're sitting here and we have computers and we have right. internet and we can be online talking about this, we, it puts us way at the top of the chain. Beautifully and said, yeah. And have, thank we, you both, Kate. We have uh, responsibilities yeah. is, is all I wanna leave. We have responsibilities. Yeah. Well, I thank both uh, Caitlin and Zoe, you too for bringing that up because you know we all know that uh, people in every community all over the world have suffered so much from economic hardship because of this covid but yeah it's it's especially a huge deal in amazonian regions yeah yeah thank you for that yeah so <laughs> wow hmm. something to think about for sure yes. and that's it's not something that uh, we've had come up in a lot of our conversations over the past couple yeah. of months as well. So thanks for really bringing yeah. the light to that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good one. Wow. You so ladies are, we, are simply good. amazing. You have another question, Stephen? I know that's just no. got to get going. I think, um, we, I think this might be a good time. It feels I, natural. Yeah. I happen to, to concur. If there's any, you know, thing you'd like to share ladies in terms of your, um, wish and vision for the world moving forward as we sign off and carry on with our days um this would be a great time to to share that oh another hour <laughs> no hey it's in a sentence or two a sentence or two i do want to put one thing if it's okay a lot of my work with cosmic sister and psychedelic feminism and both of these two ladies know what i'm talking about is that we as females in a male dominated culture which is around the world and has been this way for a long time in most cases we have our own set of things that we deal with um sometimes i like to say wounds you know but sometimes i that sounds a bit I don't know. It, it, they are wounds. It's wounds and programming. Really, that's what it is. So we have our own set of stuff and we're working with psychedelics and other plant medicines to, to work on those and, and, and rid ourselves of some of those things that keeps us down. So I don't know what the question is there, except for if you have anything you want to share about how psychedelics can help women become more um, I know like with, with Caitlin, you work on your voice and you certainly have a voice now, you know, I, I've had to do the same speaking out, you know, how have psychedelics helped you as a female be um, more able to, to help other females? There you go. There's a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
a good question. <laughs> and and they can they can contact you through your website at zoehelena.com. <laughs> yeah, We're or just at that. Cosmic Sister Everything. Just like check us out on Instagram. That's kind of where it's at at the moment. I Beautiful. would like to say, if there's anybody listening to this right now and they want to help continue to further Cosmic Sisters work, anything helps. If you can donate financially to help support more women in the future, cosmicsister.com slash support. There's tax deductible options. You can also do a donation through PayPal. So anything helps. <laughs> Great. Great. Duchess? Um, this sounds so trite and banal, but believe in yourself and respect yourself mm. enough to be your best self. That's nice. Great. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, ladies, again, on behalf of just me personally, I thank you. I thank you for the work you're doing. I thank you for the way you show up. I love your smiles, your brevity, your openness to have the conversation. And I just honor what you're doing. If there's anything I can do to support you moving forward in any of the work you're doing, uh, I'm here to honor the divine feminine and, and open the path for that. So it's one of my missions in the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Yes. Love. <laughs> Even? Last I'm words? I've said my thanks. I'm happy. All right. We'll see you all at the conference <laughs> next right. Friday. Looking forward to it. Love. All right, Thank everyone. You, Take care. Thanks Bye -bye. again. Bye.